Hello everyone. So in this video, we will going to learn about a resource server. So in previous lectures, we have learned how to set up a authorization servers with, with Spring Boot, right? And we have just set up a basically we just seen a client uh, credentials flow and also the authorization code blood with Pixie. Whenever we will going to have a public uh, public facing application, so how to do how to secure the client secrets because we cannot save client secret at the public facing uh, application that why we have a pixie so in previous lectures we have seen that and we will we will uh, in previous lecture we, we was also able to generate uh, access tokens so in this lectures we will going to see how to secure our microservices and how we will going to use that access tokens to authenticate against our resource service so before moving to that let's generate a very simple uh, microservice so just pretend this is some our microservice so let's uh, create uh, one microservice resource server and we can this is microservice one or maybe let's have this order service okay so this is our one order service so let's uh, here we need to add a uh, web dependency spring web and along with web we also need a uh, oauth to uh, resource yeah oauth to resource server so these two dependency we need so let's generate the projects and please open this projects in uh, intellij yeah, so we have opened this uh, projects inside uh, IntelliJ. So here, let's do one thing. Let's create uh, one controller. So let's do that. Inside a uh, controller, we will going to have a uh, order controller. It's just for the demo. So no need to take uh, that much attention on this thing. It's uh, whatever you want to keep the name, whatever you want to write the name for the controller, you are free to do that. So one more thing also please here use only rest controllers so this uh, if you use like a mbc controller slide it will not going to be work okay it will not work with this uh, with this controller uh, oauth will always going to give like a 4044 for setting up uh, with controller it's a separate thing so right so please make sure you are using a rest controller here so let's create a uh, one endpoints order status okay we will not going to receive anything just here we will uh, going to return it's working okay or maybe like a status or something anything right so let's annotate this gate mapping so now if I start my server, so we will not able to access this endpoints because by default, because we have added a, a, a resource server dependency Spring Boots, right? It will going to disable all the endpoints. So it, by default, it will not going to expose these endpoints. So let's set up a configurations. So this configuration is like a, a not essential, but uh, let's do that. Security config. So inside this security config, we will going to put our all the configuration. So let's enable this uh, configuration. It will going to be very, very straightforward, right? So here we just need to create a win for the security filter chain. And here we will going to receive HTTP security. So inside this uh, HTTP security, first things we will going to do like uh, enable authorization service request. Okay, authorize, and here we will going to use like authorize dot any request dot authenticated. This is like a by default setting, so we are just uh, using the same. So OAuth resource servers here we will going to use like a OAuth OAuth two. Oh, two dot JWT, and we will going to use a bit default. Yeah, this is all we need to do. And after that, let's build and return the HTTP security instance. Let's add this method labels, and also we need to annotate this with a bin. After doing these things, and one more things also inside a uh, 
properties right so if you go inside the properties we also need to add a uh, issuer yeah this annotations the value for this will going to be http colon slash slash localhost and on 8080 our port will go uh, our application will going to run authorization server so after that oauth 2 and if you remember like in previous lectures we also fetch all the well known uh, well known configurations of our authorization servers so in that if you see for this is your uri so this is the property i will show you when i start my application so this is all we need to do and here also we need to set up the port to 900 okay so this is like a minimum setting we need to do so now let's start our server this order server and one more things also like uh, here let's do one thing slash order status okay so let's restart again so now if i open a uh, postman so let's hit that uh, endpoints local host colon 900 slash this is the endpoint right order status so if i try to access this endpoint so it will going to say 401 unauthorized right so now let's generate the token and we will going to use that token to uh, access this endpoints so let's do one thing so let's go our yeah so now let's start this server we will going to use this config so let's wait for that so now let's open a uh, uh, postman so here first things we need to generate a uh, uh, code authorization code so for that we have this endpoint localhost colon 8080 on this port our application is running so let's pass this oauth2 slash authorize yeah so this is the endpoint let me check my spelling also yeah so this is the endpoints and we need to pass a few params so first param will going to be like a uh, client id so from where we will going to pick this client id so here if you see this is the client this is the client id of our public uh, client react application so let's put this client id here and after that we need a uh, response type so here we are generating a code so let's put this code response type and after that we need a uh, scope so scope will going to be like uh, open id if you are wondering from it is coming i really recommend you to please watch the previous video and here you can see it is open id right and after that we need a uh, redirect underscore uri and you can take this this is our redirect uri for now we don't have any react application which is running on this port but later we will see so here we need to put this redirect uri and after that we need a code challenge because it is a public facing uh, application so we cannot store a client secret here securely so that's why we are using a code challenge and also the code challenge method so for now as of now i am recording this video so uh, application only uh, supporting the s256 code challenge method so it will always be like 256 okay so by using this uh, cryptography algorithm we need to generate the code challenge and corresponding code, uh, code verifier right sorry corresponding to code verifier we generate a code challenge so now here this is the uh, url i am going to use for generating a code challenge so here you need to select sha256 and let's generate this and from here let's copy this code challenge 
so here we need to pass this code challenge and please make sure when you copy this code challenge and no need to generate again because we will going to use this code verifier corresponding to this and i really recommend you to please watch the previous video i will going to put the link in description so it's the second part of that video so let's copy this url now so if i go here and if i put this url here so i need to hit so here I need to enter the username and password. So if you go inside our application, so here if you see username is Amol and password is the password. So let's put that password and let's click on sign. So now if you see it will going to hit our redirect URL and from here we need to pick this code. Let's cut this code and now we will going to uh, prepare a access point so with that point uh, with this url we need to uh, hit we need to generate the access code so one field will going to be code corresponding to code i need to put this so i am just quickly putting this because i cut that and apart from the apart from the code i need a grant type grant underscore type and grant type will going to be uh, authorization code authorization underscore code because this is the flow we are using pixie and hence authorization code pixie will going to enable when we pass this code verifier code challenge right and after that we need to pass the client id and client id will going to be this same let's copy and paste it here and it will going to be like a post call so after the client id we need a redirect uri let's let's copy this redirect uri and value will going to be this copy this and here we need to pass redirect uri and apart from this we need a code verifier code verifier and this code verifier will going to be this so let's copy this and please make sure all the spelling is correct so here you need to paste this code verifier this is all we need to do so now here let's pass that endpoint also it will going to be http slash localhost 8080 slash oauth2 slash token this is the endpoint so let's hit this endpoint so now if you see we are able to generate this access token so now let's copy this access token so if i go on my this endpoint order status so from here inside the header i need to add one more header so authorization and this token type is bearer so i need to add a bearer and after that we need to paste this token right so now if you hit this endpoint so it is saying 401 unauthorized why is it okay we need to restart this thing because when we start our uh, resource servers so before that authorization should also start right because otherwise it will not going to fetch the initial configurations like a public keys and all these things right so now it will able to fetch that information because our authorization server is running so now if i hit this it is again saying 401 okay so it is complaining i think for this jwt so now let's see these things also like if i enable this enable web security let's start the server again my token will going to be expired in five minutes so it's saying the same thing i think we need to let me check we have passed that information so now let's do one thing so let's create a jwt let's do one thing like public and jwt decode and here jwt decode and let's see so here we will going to use a nimbus jwt jwt decode and
so here we need to pass the url so let's use the same okay i am just directly hard coding but you can access this from a properties right and let's call this build and here we need to return this jwtd code and let's mark this as a b so now if i restart my application and see so now let's hit this yeah so now if you see we are able to access that endpoint so it is working so i hope you like this lectures and one more things also let's uh, take this bearer token so now if you see inside uh, let me open that endpoint so yeah so here inside this jwt if we put this our url so if you if you see here so this is all the information is displaying so if you see here here we have a scope open id right so when our spring boot application will going to pass this open id so it will going to append the scope underscore open id right so if you want to use this so you need to do that so first things here we need to enable a method level security please remember that and after that inside this method right and here we can use like a pre authorize and inside the pre authorize we have a has authority inside this authority you need to use like a scope underscore and after that it's sorry open id right so please make sure you are using scope underscore like we used to do for the role right so this is how we can use that so now if i restart my application right so now if i hit that endpoints again so it's saying 401 unauthorized because maybe I think we need to generate uh, again our uh, tokens so I just don't want to uh, let's do one thing so let's generate again so if go here so first we need a code challenge again because we cannot use the same again because if it is fails to generate or if it is successfully generated in both the cases you need to generate code challenge again you will not able to use the same again if you want to use the same again you need to restart your authorization server so here i need to put this end so let's copy this and here if we paste it let's hit this time it didn't ask for us you username and password because it's already cached so here from here you can use this code so let's go inside our post call so now here you need to update this code and also you need a verifier so let's copy this and let's paste it here yeah so now if you hit this endpoint so you will able to get that access token so let's copy this access token and if we go inside uh, this endpoint so now here we need to sorry so here let's delete this and paste it here so now if we hit this so it is saying it is working and it is it is able to get authenticated using that uh, scope so now if you see it's our authorization so here if you see this endpoint is authorized so because our access token has this open id so that that is the reason our uh, we, we able to uh, access this uh, endpoint so in next lectures we will going to see how to add the roles in our access tokens and how to use that roles uh, 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 securing our uh, microservices endpoints i hope you like this lectures thank you